In this video, I'll explain how the Fourier series works. So we have a function f of x, which is supposed to be uh, periodic uh, with period 2 pi, uh, sorry, period 2L um, in general. Uh, many times L is taken to be pi. And the, um, the function then uh, is defined, say, from minus L to plus L, and uh, then repeats itself from L to uh, 3L, or uh, repeats itself from uh, minus 3L to minus L. Okay. So then uh, we expand this using sines and cosines. So we use as our basis functions, the functions that we expand in as a cosine, and uh, the cosine functions which are periodic with period 2L are of the form n pi x over L, where uh, n here can be 0, 1, 2 uh, integers. Non, uh, the negative integers are the same functions as the uh, positive integers. n equals 0 is the constant function. And uh, sine n pi x over L, where n here is 1, 2, 3. The negative integers are just negative, the um, negative sign, so it doesn't add any new information. And you can see that these functions are uh, periodic with the uh, s the smallest period is 2L when uh, n is equal to 1. So when x goes to x plus 2L, the function is just incremented by 2 pi. And cosine and sine are periodic with period uh, 2 pi. So with those basis functions, basis functions, we do our Fourier series expansion. So we write f of x equals the uh, n equals 0 term on the cosine, which is a constant. We can call that constant what we like, and traditionally it's called 1 half a 0, plus a sum of the other terms, so sum from n equals 1 to infinity. The cosine terms, which we'll multiply by constants a sub n, cosine n pi x over l, plus the sine terms, which we multiply by the constant b sub n, sine n pi x over l. And then that's our Fourier series. So f of x then, uh, with this expansion, is periodic with period 2L. And the nice thing about Fourier series, about these infinite numbers of cosines and sines is that uh, the function, the right-hand side, will converge to the left-hand side. Um, the Fourier, these functions are called complete, and uh, there are enough to, to model the function f of x. So how do we determine what these a's are? We need to use the uh, orthogonality relations which are just integral relations of cosines and sines. So uh, we integrate from minus L to L. So the integral from minus L to L, if we consider cosine n pi x over L, and integrate against cosine m pi x over L dx, uh, so here I'm going to have n and m are positive integers. So we won't worry about the case of uh, 0. If we do this integral um, in the usual way that one does a product of cosine integrals, um, what happens is that we'll get 0 if n is not equal to m. And if n is equal to m, we can actually uh, change variables here. Um, so if we uh, 
let me say uh, let psi equals pi x over L then this integral when x equals minus L we get minus pi when x equals L we get pi so we get some sort of uh, normalized uh, um, dimensionless integral and um, cosine n pi x over L will become cosine n psi cosine m psi and dx here d psi equals pi over L dx so that um, dx becomes L over pi which I'll put in front d psi so we have this um, dimensionless sort of uh, integral and this one is um, 0 if n is not equal to m and then it becomes a cosine squared over an interval of 2 pi uh, if n is equal to m so the integral of cosine squared over 2 pi is pi so if n is equal to m this integral becomes pi cancels this pi so it will be an L and then it's 0 if n is not equal to m so we use the Kronecker delta n comma m to um, represent 0 if n and m are not equal and to represent 1 if n equals m so this is the so-called Kronecker delta okay so that's the first integral the uh, we're going to use this change of variables here the second integral is what happens if we integrate sine against sine sine n pi x over L sine m pi x over L dx again changing variables we'll get an integral from minus pi to pi sine n psi sine m psi d psi and the same uh, feature of the cosine cosine integral applies to the sine sine integral and this will also be a L delta n comma m so this is the first relationship this is the second relationship and finally the third orthogonality relationship is what happens if we multiply cosine and sine so minus L to L cosine n pi x over L sine n pi x over L dx and these two can be shown to just simply always integrate to zero okay so we have our Fourier series we have our um, orthogonality relations then we can determine the A's and the B's so let's see how we do that so we have our Fourier series f of x is equal to one half a naught plus sum from n equals one to infinity a sub n cosine n pi x over L plus B sub n sine n pi x over L and let's say we want to find a sub n so to find a sub n we isolate this by multiplying by cosine okay so we'll have the integral from minus L to L f of x times cosine n pi x over L dx and um, when we do this we have to consider uh, changing this dummy variable n to m so we don't get confused because we're using n here and then we're integrating against um, one half a naught so we have the integral from minus L to L cosine n pi x over L dx plus we switch the summation sign with the integral sign so here I change the dummy variable to m instead of n 
and then we have an a sub m, the integral from minus l to l, cosine m pi x over l, cosine n pi x over l dx, plus b sub m, the integral from minus l to l, sine m pi x over l, cosine n pi x over l dx. Okay, so that's inside the summation sign. Now uh, there are two cases that we need to consider. The first case is n equals zero. If n is equal to zero, then cosine n pi x over l becomes one. So this integral becomes two l and the two cancels the one half. So we get l a zero and then uh, n is equal to zero here, so we have an integral of cosine m pi x over l. m is not zero, it's one to infinity. So this is an integral over a cosine, which will be zero, because the cosine is periodic with equal positive and negative parts. This will be an integral over sine, which will also be zero. So we get l a naught if n is equal to zero. And if n is not equal to zero, then this term will be zero because we're integrating over periods of the cosine. Uh, if n is not equal to zero, then sine cosine will be zero by our orthogonality relationship. And then uh, cosine cosine will be our Kronecker delta. So this will give us the sum from m equals one to infinity, a sub m, and this will give us our L times our Kronecker delta of M comma N. Now the Kronecker delta means that every term in the sum is zero except the term where M is equal to N and that term then gets a one here. So when M is equal to N we get A sub N L times one so we get L times A sub N n is not equal to zero. And both of these l a zero, n equals zero, l a n, n not equal to zero, is just l a n, right? Whether n is zero or not. So then putting that together, we get a sub n equals one over l times the integral from minus l to l f of x cosine n pi x over l dx, okay? And that will be the first coefficient, a sub n, okay? True for n equals uh, 0, 1, 2, okay? Now if we want to find b sub n, then we just multiply by sine n pi x over l. Uh, change the dummy variable from n to m. Uh, when we multiply by sine, uh, this term will go away. This term will go away because cosine times sine is zero. This term will give us a sine n pi x over l times sine m pi x over l integrated from minus l to l. That will give us another Kronecker delta. So it will collapse down to just one term in the sum. And it's easy to see that the same steps will apply and we'll get 1 over L, the integral from minus L to L, F of X, sine N pi X over L DX. And this will be N equals 1, 2, 3. Okay? And that's it for our Fourier series. So if this is the form of the Fourier series, then we can determine the coefficients uh, simply by uh, integrating the function against cosine and against sine.